All right, I have crawled underneath the Forerunner. Right in here is that little ring that slides back and forth that the fork goes into. And you can hear it slides back and forth pretty good. I can't engage it all the way because the tires are sitting on ramps. There's got to be a little bit of slop for it to engage. And down here I've got the uh, the shift fork set up. I'm going to do a test after I connect the battery. We'll see if it goes to the other side. I've got the uh, battery connected. I'm going to put the key in the ignition. And let's turn the ignition on without starting it. You hear that clicking? Look at the sound of that, but it stopped. That may or may not be what I'm looking at for the problem. I'm going to shut it off though real quick. Let's take a look. that moved any at all.
testing a 2002 Toyota 4Runner ADD actuator module for the front axle that locks the center differential so it makes the wheels turn the same. This is disengaged. This is disengaged. This is disengaged. That's engaged. I switched polarities on my little 9 volt transistor battery. And that is disengaged. It looks like it works. You can tell that the armature or the commutator is uh, got some discoloration in it. I'm gonna have to clean that up. Right, here is another problem. On each side of it is the brushes, and the brushes are like spring loaded, and you can see one just slowly, amazingly deciding to work out. It's a spring pushing it out. The one on this side, you see the spring underneath it. And up there, that one's still stuck. When those brushes uh, don't pop out like they're supposed to, that'll cause that arcing to go on on the commutator, which basically uh, basically creates a open circuit or high resistance, which will cause the motor to stop running. I gotta clean this all up with some emery paper, some very fine emery paper, and see if I can get it working right. Got a little uh, 320 emery paper. This is like uh, plastic stuff that I'm not really too impressed with, but I'll use it. This is about as coarse as you want to go. I'd prefer going with a, a higher grit, 600,000, something like that. Because you, you don't want a whole lot of scratches in that when it's done. I'll have to be real gentle. After a little bit of sanding, basically lightly holding the sandpaper on it while you turn this. I'm actually holding onto this piece to turn. But uh, you can see it's cleaned right up. And like I said, you don't want to go coarser than 320 because you'll really put some scratches in it. There's some scratches there that I don't like, but I think it's it'll it'll work. Now onto the brushes. Try to get the brushes out gently while holding the camera. It's like, see that spring? Yeah, these things are definitely gummed up a bit, I think. The top one. You want to be gentle with them. You don't want to be too harsh on them because they will break. And then the things just basically junk after that. Alright. I think yeah, she's coming out slowly. That should be free moving. So it pushes up against the commutator. I don't know if you can see in there. I'll try to get the light going. But they're not shiny and coppery, they're black. And that creates resistance, which means a voltage current can't travel through it.
which causes the motor not to want to run. So I gotta get those cleaned up now. I was able to get the, this top brush out. You can see the spring here. It looks like it's attached up in here still, which is good. You know, I'm kind of scared of it breaking loose and going down that hole. Although I'll probably be taking this cover off again anyway. And you can see right there, there's the brush. You can see how black it is. It's scarred. I'm going to try cleaning that with a uh, Q-tip dipped, it, dipped in uh, rubbing alcohol. See if I can't clean that up proper. Uh, test my uh, multimeter. Right now it's an open load. I've got it set there in the diode test. That's like the lowest resistance, highest resistance. Diodes basically are short one direction and they uh, open the other. And I connect my two leads together. And that's my resistance reading 0 0.802. That's basically the resistance in these leads. So then I go over here. And I'll take that uh, hook, oh manual, put it underneath this. And then I'll touch on the brush end, and then on the cable end and see what my resistance is. And I, I'd like to do it, but I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. But basically my reading was 0 0.802 ohms. So that uh, means I got a good connection through there. So I'm going to call that brush good. And I'll work on the one below it. Well, spring tried to fall in the hole on me. i have to fish it out and put it back up in there. All right, I got the brush situated in there. Had to use my hemostats and my scribe to get it up into place. And I'm using a sharpie to hold it in place so it doesn't pop back out. I'm going to have to configure a staple, about a 9 16th or 14 millimeter staple, to act as a holder to hold that brush into place so I can put the armature back in. Looking for a paper clip. Can't seem to find a paper clip, so I'll make this work.
here I am underneath the forerunner you just got that all cleaned up save for maybe a little RTV that was in the, uh, the threads I got most of that cleaned out uh, I'm ready to for the first time install the uh, ADD actuator I think I come to a conclusion that by stressing the uh, voltage current applied across pins two and six, I was forcing the motor into uh, like an over limit and it wasn't able to come out of it. And so what I did before I get ready to install this is I took it apart one more time to check everything out. And I brought it out here using the car battery to go across pins two and six, but only momentarily. So there's basically slop in it because if it gets too far to the left or too far to the right, the motor just doesn't have enough ump to pull it out of it. That's my theory. We're gonna see how it works here. Getting ready to install this up in here. And what I'm gonna do, try to record some of it. Careful here. And I need to fish the electrical part into the hole first. And somehow it finagles around without breaking anything. Been down there for about 10 minutes and still trying to figure out how to get this thing up there. I do recall this wire clip was slightly bent when I pulled it off, which may have happened when I was pulling it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Allen, Allen head bolt out and get that clip out of there and see if it'll go up easier. It's just like so close that it wants to go. All right, I got the guy up in there. I ended up having to pull it out, flip it upside down, opposite of the way you would think it would go in to get it to go in. Let's see if I can uh, finagle it here. Where it's going to come out, I believe I've got a pickup, turn, and come down with it some way there. I've got it up there and get this thing finagled out over there we go see right there that's the way it's gonna go up in there and it goes up in there opposite of what you would think that's upside down it's got to go the other way so you got to put it like that gently put that up in there like that push the motor past that support on the cross member and twist it around to get it to go up in there and you do this all gently. So I got it up in there, turned it around, lined up the fork with the uh, ring inside the axle that slides into the differential to lock it, and uh, just got to kind of get up in here and wiggle it a bit and make sure you got it onto that ring 
because if you don't get it on the ring right, it of course won't work right. And now I just got to pull it apart, wipe it down one more time, and I could put the RTB silicone on the gasket surface. And be ready to install this guy. Just going to line it up proper. I'm going to put the RTV silicone former gasket. Be careful, don't drop out on me. Sorry for my language. Uh, put the RTV former gasket here. Got it finagled out here so I can get it on there properly, and then I have to reach up behind the cross member, behind the uh, steering rack, through the cool or the lines for the power steering fluid. You know, finagle that into place, and hopefully it goes on the first time. I got the uh, former gasket in place now to uh, try to get it up there without getting any dirt on it and it'll all squish out and make a nice even uh, coat. I'm gonna put the bolts in just finger tight and let it set for a bit. We got that guy in place without uh, getting the uh, RTV silicone former gasket onto anything else. Did get a little bit on my fingers. I put enough of it on there, it should squish out, but not so much that it's going to get in there and interfere with anything. It's always hard to tell on the inside. You know, a lot of people put too much of it and it causes problems. And you just want to put a small amount, just enough to make the gasket and then push it on. It's on there hand tight, the bolts aren't in there. And that'll set up while I'm uh, getting the bolts into it. And then I'll put the bolts in finger tight and let it sit for a bit longer. And I can tighten it down. Got the bottom two bolts in to hold it into place. I had to advise doing that first before messing with the top two because you got to reach in above the uh, sway bar, power steering lines, steering rack, all a bunch of neat stuff to be able to get to it. You can see it up in there. So I've got, I've tried it a couple times by hand and my fingers just don't move good enough. So I've got this little device here, which got a little magnet and a mini grabber on the end of it. I also have the sockets that I, the multiple extensions I use to take it out that I can try as well. But we'll give this one a shot first. That magnet holds it pretty good. I'm going to pick it up there for you. I ought to be able to start it with that, I think. Like I said, it's got grabbers as well if I need it. The stabilizer, you can see the little grabbers. Here's my assortment of uh, extensions. One's actually got a wobble. It. And a 12 millimeter wrench and socket or 3 8 drive ratchet and then the Allen bolt with the wire clip that I gotta install as well. Gotta fish out my Allen wrench here as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these together and uh, <coughs> tighten the top two first and then I'll do the bottom two with the wrench. You see you use a long extension going to a short extension, it's got the wobble in it. And then up there is where the top nut is if I can get into it. And you can see it up in there. But it is. Let me snug it up a bit. And go back to the next one, snug next one to it. Snug it up a bit, then do the bottom two, then come back up here again. Finished uh, tightening the bottom two for the first pass. Trying to do kind of an X pattern. But uh, you can see by the RTV, I've got a fairly good amount of squish coming out of it.
Would be a reasonable assumption to say some of that's happening on the inside as well. Get up in there so you can see that maybe. Get the light. Let me light. You can see there's a fair amount of squish up there as too. I don't anticipate this leaking. I don't think it's super high pressure inside a differential, especially since it's got an atmospheric vent. And then I'll go back to the top and snug those down the rest of the way and then bottom two and I'm done with those bolts. Well, I got the uh, clip bolt, or the Allen head bolt in there with the clip on it for the wire. And you see uh, all the bolts are installed now. I didn't break off the nipple for the uh, atmospheric vent, the electrical connection there. And it's all lighting over there. I got to connect that up now. Here you got the uh, the anchor point for the uh, electrical connection installed first, kind of a two-hand operation. One hand uh, ahead of the. Uh, the uh, cross member, the other hand coming up from behind, and I was able to push up on the uh, metal clip to push the plastic anchor down into it. And you look, you see, I got the easier stuff the uh, vent, atmospheric vent, and the electrical connection, and she's all done back here. All I have to do now is put gear oil in it. We got 7590 GL5. I'm using Mobile One. I'm a Mobile One fan. And should be ready for uh, driving and testing. I'll let the uh, RTV secure a little more, you know, cure a little bit more before I put the gear oil in it. It has been a few days since I uh, went through and uh, worked on the uh, ADD actuator for locking the front differential and you know putting new oil in the front axle as well as uh, going in and replacing the oil in the transfer case which both of them weren't too bad but they probably needed to be changed I know I never did the, uh, the front differential I'd say that the previous owner maybe used royal purple because of the color of it coming out it had kind of a purplish tinge to it. This uh, it's been drove for a few few days, a few a number of miles. And you can see the lights aren't flashing. It is in two-wheel drive mode, and now we're gonna go and put it into uh, all-wheel drive mode by pressing the little button on the. Uh, transfer case select lever and got the button pushed in you can see the lights are flashing gonna put her into drive and let's see what happens there you go as soon as I let off the gas she went into all-wheel drive mode I'm gonna go push the button on the dash for the front axle and now we've got the lights flashing with the yellow and we'll drive a little bit and there it is it's locked in the battery's acting up on my camera so I'll be quick about this right now we're all locked in I'm gonna press the button to come out so I'm gonna press the button once should get some flashing lights. Come on. Press that button on the dash one more time.
intriguing. Leave that one in park. Press the button. Again. And third time. There we go. When I put it in park, I said, okay, now it knows what I'm doing. Back in the drive, and look at that. It came right out. Now we're going to take it out of all wheel drive mode by pressing the button on the transfer case select switch. Put it off the gas. Put it in reverse. And she came out. I would say this guy is fixed for the time being. <laughs> 